Um, my name is Siddharth Vardarajan, and I'm a founding editor of The Wire, which is an independent news platform based in India that's been publishing since 2015. So we are now in the eighth year of our life. Um, and in this short time have emerged as an important voice, um, important part of the media landscape in India. Roughly February 21, uh, Forbidden Stories approached us uh, with uh, information that uh, at least a couple of our phones uh, might be infected with Pegasus and uh, whether we'd be willing to A, have our phones forensically examined and B, take part in a wider uh, investigative project into the use of Pegasus spyware in India and elsewhere in the world. And we, of course, readily agreed because we knew uh, Forbidden Stories' work. And um, subsequently, my phone and the phone of my colleague, MK Venu, were tested by Amnesty International's uh, security lab. And they came back with information that our phones were infected. So it was, it was a bit, bit creepy that uh, we were ourselves the target. But at the same time, we felt that this was important work that The Wire needed to do in order to bring in order to highlight how uh, spyware was being, was being used, not as people ordinarily imagine to deal with uh, quote unquote bad guys, right? Terrorists and so on, but actually to uh, you know, target journalists, opposition leaders, <coughs> human rights defenders and various uh, people who ought not to have been subjected to the use of this kind of technology. The, uh, the climate or the atmosphere for, uh, for the media and of course for uh, the political opposition and for you know, political activists of one kind or the other uh, you know, has been quite hostile uh, uh, in India for the last uh, eight, nine years. I would say it's, you know, at, at least as far as activists go, it's never been a very benign climate, but things have definitely gotten worse with the advent of uh, the Modi government and uh, the way it's pursued its policies. So what we've seen is an increasing willingness on the part of the state to attempt to criminalize legitimate forms of dissent, legitimate forms of political opposition, uh, journalism that it doesn't like. And when you see a state, when you see a, a, a government that's willing to pursue criminal charges against people for exercising their democratic rights under the constitution. Uh, that itself is alarming and, and bad enough, but, but when a state which has that intention and has, has been doing that also resorts to uh, highly intrusive illegal methods of surveillance, then you can imagine how dangerous this cocktail becomes. Uh, so not only is the state attempting to stop or criminalize opposition and dissent by using every conceivable law that it has in place or misusing those laws, but it is also trying to get the upper hand uh, even in terms of issues that activists may raise, planning that they may be involved in, uh, strategizing, uh, research, all of these are legitimate uh, activities that, that political activists, uh, political parties, uh, human rights defenders, journalists around the world engage in and have never had a problem doing so in, in, a, in a democratic society. But uh, the use of surveillance to get a head start on what people are planning, people are thinking, I think represents uh, an added degree of menace and, and shows the extent to which the government views dissent and opposition as uh, very, very dangerous for its own survival. So I think that when you combine repression against activities on the ground with uh, highly intrusive illegal forms of surveillance, such as using spyware like Pegasus, 
then you uh, are essentially looking at a situation where the state is intent on crushing all opposition and nipping all opposition in the bud. And if you add to this the possibility, not so much with Pegasus, but we've seen in some of the revelations that have emerged in the forensic examination of the computers of the Bhima Koregao uh, activists who us, you know, have spent upwards of four or five years in jail now. Uh, we see how malware has been used by unknown players, presum presumably people linked to the state, uh, to plant evidence on, uh, on the computers and devices of some of these activists. So, uh, you know, if in fact surveillance and spyware and malware is being used not just as a passive form of information gathering, but as a means of, of creating uh, some kind of electronic trail of evidence which would then give the state an alibi to move against that person, then this is something that is even more sinister. We know that states resort to all kinds of surreptitious means of uh, information gathering when it comes to other states, right? So if you look at the history of espionage, for example, uh, you can't try to straightjacket espionage activities against uh, foreign states uh, into the straightjacket of you know, municipal law. Sure, there is international law which governs some of this, right? But, uh, you know, municipal or domestic law is largely silent on the question of, uh, you know, say, uh, the Russian government wants to plant a listening device in the Hungarian embassy, right? Uh, and they send the workman in and put a microphone under the ambassador's desk. Um, so this kind of thing has gone on forever, right? And, uh, Presumably, those whom the state, uh, you know, classifies as national security enemies or risks, would also be subject to this kind of surveillance. And I think, by and large, it's very hard to uh, prevent or think of a situation where you outlaw states from doing that, because, you know, warfare, you know, statecraft, all of this, you know, has a has a place for espionage and uh, and surveillance of this kind. The problem comes when this technology is used against, you know, civilian targets uh, against, and, and, you know, um, and what the Pegasus project unearthed was that you have literally thousands of such targets being uh, identified by Pegasus clients uh, in India in Mexico, in Hungary, various countries. Uh, and 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 this shows how um, you know we cited for um, uh, acquiring this kind of a, a technology in terms of dealing with enemies of the state. It's, it's clearly not the case that um, you know uh, this, this is how it's being used. So I just give, you know, obviously states would claim this as a reason uh, to, to justify the acquisition of this kind of technology, and you know the Israeli company. Uh, NSO group also in its propaganda says that, oh, we only sell it to governments and we only sell it to deal with terror and, you know, pedophilia and these kinds of things. But the reality, as we've established through hard evidence, is, is quite the opposite. And, you know, there's the added irony that in India's case, of course, uh, the government of India refuses to confirm or deny uh, whether it's bought Pegasus or not. And in the face of repeated questioning, uh, you know, uh, it's simply stonewalled even the Supreme Court of India and the Supreme Court's uh, appointed committee. So I think that this is not an argument that uh, the government of India can invoke. I wish it would invoke it because then at least it would admit to having bought Pegasus. <laughs> but, you know, you have this funny situation where, um, you know, the government of India officially will not confirm or deny, yeah. uh, you know, having acquired Pegasus. And, you know, we have some evidence, uh, OCCRP, uh, looked at import export mm. data and found that uh, you know equipment that conforms to the hardware that the NSO group exports uh, mm. as part of the Pegasus kind of package was indeed bought uh, something you know resembling that was bought by India 
And, um, you know, you have the New York Times talking of how a contract was signed in 2017 as part of a billion dollar, you know, missile and uh, cyber tech kind of contract. So you have this kind of reporting that's happened, but the government of India is, is in uh, complete, um, you know, silence mode. It will not confirm or deny. And the, the presumption, of course, is that they have bought it, uh, yeah. but they will, not, they will not admit to that. First, I mean, I can speak for journalism, certainly it was you know, journalists who were inordinately, you know, they, they were sort of targeted in a big way in India, right? More than 40 plus uh, reporters numbers were in that, in that list of, you know, uh, target numbers that we, that we saw in the database. Uh, and, you know, the, the fact is that our work can't stop, right? You can't, just because you're targeted with Pegasus or you fear being targeted with Pegasus or some other rival product, um, you know, you can't stop doing the work that you're doing because then, you know, uh, then the bad guys win, right? So, so and, and I would say the same applies to, to activists, no matter what your, uh, what your cause would be. Uh, and so the answer to that is that you have to find, you know, smart ways of working uh, you can't stop working. You can't stop using telecoms. Uh, so you have to perhaps, you know, resort to physical meetings when things that you really don't want to leak uh, have to be discussed. Uh, and otherwise, you know, to you know, devise secure, sensible rules of the road for communication. Uh, it is possible to have secure communication. And I think most, most uh, serious organizations will have worked out methods of doing so. Uh, so you should all, you should assume that, yeah, there is something like Pegasus being deployed uh, and that your day-to-day -day communications are being monitored, uh, but then find a way to carry on doing your work. And I think it is entirely possible to do so. Uh, and as, as for the, you know, this argument that, well, you know, what do you have to hide? Uh, the fact is, you know, in, in fact, uh, when we reported about the Pegasus project in India, the range of targets really astonished us. And I think it astonished people at large as well. So the young woman who had accused the former chief justice of sexual harassment, her relatives, uh, you know, being targeted, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a very, very wide number of people who could be affected. And the fact is that if you consider how you use your phone these days, right? And I think that's also why it resonated much more. I mean, it was a difficult, story, I suppose, for people to understand, but it, it, it struck a chord with the opposition and with the wider public because people use their phone for everything these days uh, to communicate, to take photographs, to, uh, you know, it's, it's an inseparable part of your body in a, in a way. And, uh, you, you know, you do financial transactions. Uh, so, of course, the security of that information has to be, has to be maintained. Uh, so, I think arguments which go, you know, along the lines of, you know, well, what's the big deal? You share privacy data with Facebook anyway. The point is that uh, it, it should be up to you uh, to decide how much you want to share and with whom. So I may elect to share data with, uh, with an advertising company when I visit uh, a website, or I may decide to share data with Facebook. But certainly I haven't signed up to share you know, my private uh, information with some unknown government agency. Right, so so this, these are facetious arguments that yeah. people trot out. In fact, uh, the uh, I had I had a meeting with a, with an Israeli diplomat uh, last year at the Jaipur at a, at, a, at a media conclave where he uh, basically was giving me the same argument that well, you know, uh, we don't have privacy vis-a-vis -vis Facebook either. And I said, you know, you cannot seriously be comparing the two, uh, yeah. and that's completely dishonest to think that you know sharing of information with Facebook can be compared to. Uh, you know, information being harvested in this way through Pegasus. Uh, so I think that, you know, these arguments need to be confronted head on. Yeah. And, uh, and, and people who make them should be exposed. And, and those who say, well, you know, what do you have to hide anyway? Ask them to put their email and banking passwords out on, on, on Twitter. 